the entry box provided in the store. A very good evening to you and welcome to the 8 p.m. news broadcast brought to you by Eswatini TV. My name is Nondo Bego Nzabgelago. Let's take a look at tonight's headlines. Government has launched a 30 billion Emalangeni economic recovery strategy. The Prime Minister says it was not easy for the country to reach the 1990 target in the fight against HIV and AIDS. The House of Assembly has passed a bill that authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow money amounting to over 2 billion emalangeni. And now for the news. Prime Minister Ambrose Lamini has launched a 30 billion economic recovery strategy post COVID 19, which is expected to create thousands of jobs for Emaswati. The Prime Minister also launched a delivery unit, which will ensure delivery of the recovery strategy. The launch was held at the Royal Villas in Ezulwini. The post COVID 19 recovery plan consists of 23 billion Malangeni from the private sector with an additional 7 million investment from the government of the Kingdom of Eswatini. In total, the recovery plan consists of 97 projects that are ready to be implemented within 18 months. The projects will inject a total of 30 billion 120 million Malangeni into the economy, creating 40,126 jobs for recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking on launching the strategy, the Prime Minister Ambrose Lamini said the recovery plan does not replace the national development strategy and the government strategy roadmap launched last year. The Prime Minister then explained why the plan focuses on major projects. Some might reasonably ask why focus on big projects and the private sector-led economy. A core principle of the recovery plan is to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the economy in the short term in order to make up for the anticipated losses in GDP. To do that, government intends to, pos to reposition itself as a facilitator and enabler of business development and growth. The private sector is afforded the opportunity to drive the economy whilst our micro, small, medium enterprises will be empowered to become the engine of economic growth. Big projects can provide the much needed stimulus from, from which all economic activity can be nurtured and developed to grow the country's GDP. Prime Minister also announced a unit that will monitor the implementation of the projects. The government is committed in creating an enabling environment for growth by reducing barriers. For certain TV news, I'm LinkedIn Gude, Esurini. By the United Nations. Prime Minister Ambrose Lamini says it was not easy for the country to reach the target of the 1990s set by the United Nations in the fight against HIV and AIDS. The Prime Minister was speaking during a meeting for the UNAIDS Global Status Update report on HIV and AIDS. According to the United Nations UNA's report for 2019, globally there are about 38 million people who are living with HIV. 20.7% of those are from the East and Southern Africa. The report further says in 2019 in the Kingdom of Eswatini, about 200,000 Maswati were living with HIV. The report says 192,000 people are on treatment in the kingdom and the large percentage of those are females. Speaking at the launch of the 2020 UNAIDS Global Status Update report on HIV AIDS, the Prime Minister Ambrose Lamini informed the meeting that it was not easy for the Kingdom of Eswatini to achieve the 1990 target 10 years before schedule. Eswatini is now recognized internationally as a shining example of success for rolling out a successful HIV response. This remarkable achievement is a result of fruitful collaborations with all stakeholders consistently in serving 
in service delivery and sustained support for the HIV response by all involved. The road leading to the accolades we are now receiving has not been easy ever since the first case of AIDS was reported in the kingdom in 1986. The first national HIV response focused largely on education and information dissemination. The country established the first attempt at a multi-sectoral approach by introducing a crisis management technical committee under the Deputy Prime Minister's office. It is this committee that developed the first national strategic plan on HIV and AIDS 2000-2005. Speaking on behalf of the American government, Ambassador Lisa Peterson congratulated the kingdom for achieving the 1990-90 target 10 years ahead of schedule. He says due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, there's been a decline by 40% in the month of June in terms of testing for HIV in the country. Prime Minister reaffirmed government's commitment to promote, protect and scale up HIV services to all who need them. The Prime Minister says this commitment will not be realized without the support of everyone as the country go through the last mile in its HIV response. For Swatin TV News, I'm LinkedIn Gude Esulini. The Minister of Economic Planning, Dr. Tambo Gina, says the 30 billion Emalangeni stimulus package will not only give a Maswati hope, but will also accelerate the economy into a much sustainable path to achieve the development vision. Dr. Gina was speaking in Ezulwini during the launch of government's economic recovery plan. The COVID-19 pandemic turned out not to be a health problem, but a serious and multi-faced threat that impacts all spheres of life. According to the Minister for Economic Planning and Development, Dr. Tambokina, it is an immediate threat to people's health and lives, and it is a serious threat to the economy which Emaswati depend on. Noting the eminent threat to the economy, His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, put together a team made up of ministries dealing with agriculture, commerce, economic planning, finance, natural resources, public works, tourism, and youth. This team was tasked with finding a post-COVID economic recovery plan that would not only save the economy, but also accelerate it into a much higher income generation and wealth creation trajectory. The post-COVID-19 Eswatini Economic Recovery Plan that His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, will launch today is about gearing government and the private sector to work together to do everything in their power to protect and grow the economy. Minister Kina stated that government is looking for new development pathways with the potential for job creation. For Eswatini TV News, Sondam Langen with LinkedIn Kule, Inezulwini. The Ministry of Finance will now be in a position to raise a loan of about 110 million US dollars from the International Monetary Fund. This follows a decision made in Parliament authorizing the Ministry to approach the IMF for the loan that will finance the Eswatini budget. Minister of Finance Neil Rickenberg says this money is needed urgently and it will be repaid after a period of three and one quarter years. Minister of Finance Neil Reckenberg says the over 110 million US dollars loan will push the country's debt to 35% of the gross domestic product. This is the internationally recommended ceiling. Countries should not exceed. The minister says due to the current economic situation in the country, government could possibly exceed the ceiling. He says government will, however, be able to repay these loans as it has been able to settle one of its biggest loans in June and others are maturing. Because to a billion Emalangeni 
short in the amount of tax that we've collected so far year to date in the first four months. So these things are compounding into a real financial crisis for us uh, as a country. So, so, so honorable members, what we have here is I have a loan that we have secured with the IMF. As you might know, IMF normally come with huge conditions. This is not a program. Normally IMF do not loan money. Normally they come with a program, which means if, unless you do something, they don't give you the money. This, this is not that. This is a, a straightforward loan. Members of Parliament then debated the issue of the loan. It's a good thing that money my loan condition. Let us say I come outside of those chairs go on. The money loan that come like what I am if I am still look at my conditions the money. For an example, when they have been condition, let's see. Nas bole gale loan loan. Nere sa kona bole gale nye iloan. It looks like log vusalum not. It's more about more loans. And let's see, I'm feeling so sad I'm alone. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried, really. Good, I'm very much worried about where we are going. We're going to be able to make good. Good, I'm not going to be able to make it. But just do a serious roadshow after this. Let, let, let's, let everyone see that we're going to be able to make it. Minister Reichenberg says the local economy could be better in about three years. However, he warned that things may be tough in the meantime. He then stated that government will soon acquire a loan to pay its areas. For Swatini TV News, Temgos Mavimbela, Parliament. The Minister for Tourism, Moses Vilagadi, says his ministry is looking to revive the tourism sector through events that can market the country. The minister says the tourism sector has been negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The minister was speaking during an interview with the Swatini TV News. The tourism sector this year lost over 20 million in Malangini due to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the Minister for Tourism, Moses Vilagati, the ministry is looking to use events to revive this sector. Vilagati says there are a number of plans the ministry has to revive the sector, which one of them is to use the Swazi Rally event to market the country. <laughs> The minister says before COVID-19, bikers from all over the world came into the kingdom to be part of this event. He says it is their wish that organizers of the event will work together with bikers from the kingdom in all the regions to make this event a success whilst observing the COVID-19 regulations. The minister says the bikers will visit all the tourist attraction places in the kingdom, take pictures and interact with people. The Kingdom of Eswatini in 2019 was among the five countries in the world that people can visit in 2020 by Lonely Planet. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this has not been fulfilled. For Eswatini TV News, Sondam Langeni with Tembi Gosima Vimbela in Lobamba. Parliament has authorized the Ministry of Finance to redirect funds in the region of 2 billion Emalangeni from other government ministries to COVID-19 responses. This money has been allocated to various ministries for the purposes of external travel, procuring furniture and for new projects. One of the issues deliberated in Parliament on Friday was Finance Sectional Committee's Supplementary Appropriation Bill Report. This bill seeks to redirect funds from government ministries to responding to COVID-19. The bill was tabled by the committee's chairperson, Tandi Ngumalo, who said the Regional Development Fund and Micro Project Unit will not be affected. This was echoed by Vice Chairperson Lutwot Lamini, who said, Parliament should play its oversight role in monitoring how the money will be used. <laughs> COVID, we need more resources. 
kwaqwala sahamba saye mavuso sekugcwele nakhona sesibiyele siteki nakhona ke gcwala kunesicingo sokuthi uhulumende ahlale alungile ubona sikwende kanjani Members of Parliament then debated the issue Lo ngenta nivumele likomiti lamuhla kutsi kude imali leta uhamba iyobolekwa lapha kwentiwa ema readjustment within a budget leya phasiswa ngithi and inhloso yakho u addressa umkhuhlane lo ngene umkhono nesiphanga ever at the end of the debate it was agreed that the ministry of finance will be permitted to redirect the funds it was also agreed that the regional development funds 59 million nemalangeni as well as micro project units 15 million nemalangeni should not be redirected as earlier asked by the ministry of finance for swatini tv news tim gosmavimbela parliament Maloma Coilery has donated face masks to the value of over 20,000 in Malangeni to the Ministry of Education, which will be distributed to over 20 schools in the Lubombo and Shiselweni regions. This comes after the coal mine signed a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Education, pledging to continue to support the ministry in whatever it needs. Last month, Maloma Koyari donated 40,000 liters of water to schools in the Lubombo and Hisarian regions to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Maloma has once again donated 2,143 face masks to the value of 23,573 to 20 schools in the Shiseloen and Lubombo regions in order to minimize the spread of COVID-19. The presentation was made by Maloma Koyari, Managing Director, Sang Pile Simelane. Similarly, says they have developed partnership with schools and they are determined to assist where they can. The principal secretary in the Ministry of Education, Petram Stewart, passed his gratitude to Maloma for the continued support. So I said that we was born the MOU that is signed. We are not just signed. We are not just. He pleads for solar electricity assistance in the long run, which he believes can be of great assistance to the schools. They then signed a memorandum of understanding to con for continued support. I'm Kian Msivi for Swati TV News, Babane. The post-COVID-19 economic recovery plan that was launched by the Prime Minister will improve and increase the employment rate in the Kingdom of Eswatini. This was said by the Eswatini Economic Policy Analysis and Research Center Director, Executive Director Dr. Tabo Sakolo during the launch of the economic recovery strategy which was held at the Royal Villas Hotel in Ezulwini. The Executive Director of the Eswatini Economic Policies Analysis and Research Center, Dr. Tambo Sakolo, says the post-COVID economic recovery plan should be of great assistance to all Emaswati and reach out to everyone, especially the youth, so that they can be able to take over businesses. Dr. Sakolo says this plan will include all the different sectors that are available in the country, such as agriculture. The plan ensures that no Eswatini is left behind. And they, this uh, part is in two folds. The first part is during the recovery um, um, uh, plan uh, building, where we, we 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 engage different stakeholders, as as, as Nati has, has highlighted, in trying to uh, uh, elicit their inputs into the plan. What can make the situation better? What can resuscitate the country's economy? What can drive the economy back to the recovery path? But also, we we have to make sure that. When the plan is, is implemented, it's, it does not benefit a few, it benefits the masses of, uh, of, of, our, of our population. An investment committee will be placed to ensure that the plan to revive the economy is successful, as it will also improve development in the Kingdom of Eswatini. Reporting, I'm Demalang and Lamini with Muslim Konda in Babane. The Mbabane Municipal Council has found that most businesses do not comply with the COVID-19 regulations because many do not use proper alcohol-based sanitizers for their customers. Mbabane Municipal Council Communications Officer Lakita Bete says they have already taken action against those businesses. 
The Mbabane Municipal Council earlier this week started a campaign of checking for complaints amongst businesses in town to ensure that customers are safe from COVID-19 and that businesses do comply. The Mbabane Municipal Council Public Relations Officer Lucky Sabese says they found that most businesses do not comply and use sanitizers that are way below the required standards. It's very sad, Kiani, that the figures that we're coming back with um, um, do reflect that most of the business establishments are making use of sanitizers that are way, way, way below than the required um, uh, alcohol content of 70%. Uh, our doors are open, uh, especially if it's a business establishment that has not uh, been covered by our officers who are going around. So you do have um, the right to approach us, make us aware of the suspect sanitizer um, that are being used. Um, or alternatively, also, we must emphasize that the customer has a right to actually make use of his or her own sanitizer before entering the establishment. But the requirement uh, with that is to actually, um, he or she must be seen by uh, the person at the door that um, the customer is applying his or her own sanitizer. Voivo Insnees at the Health Promotion Officer and the Minister of Health says sanitizers that are below the required standards take time to vanish after sanitization. Alcohol is a shayomela, a dandelion. So we have a corner we born and a mess of a social She says they can also be smelled as they do not smell of alcohol at all. Let's take a look at our sports news. Acting Chief Executive Officer of Eswatini TV, Ngatisi Maisela, says the station has not received any request from the Eswatini Football Association pertaining to the broadcast of the Premier League games in case football action resumes. Maisela says, however, if they do receive the request, they will consider it and see how they can assist the nation in viewing the games on the national broadcaster. Maisela was speaking during an interview with Eswatini TV Sports in Mbabane. On the 28th of August this year, the Swatini National Football Association is expected to make a final decision to either proceed with the 2019-2020 football season or nullify the entire season. The decision will also update the fans to know if they will be allowed to be in the stadiums or not. The acting chief executive officer of Eswatini Television, Ngadis Maisela, says the office have not received any request coming from the Football Association suggesting on the broadcast of the games. We have not as yet been approached by uh, the Football Association of Eswatini uh, concerning that issue. Um, we hope that should we reach that stage of uh, the Premier League in particular, returning uh, to action, we we hope that the uh, football association will will approach us, and if that does happen, we certainly will have a a, a look um, at that proposal uh, because, as you may be aware, uh, the broadcasting of of, of football matches uh, takes a lot in terms of resources, uh, which includes financial resources. However, I think working together um, as stakeholders in this particular issue. Once the games um, are given the go-ahead um, to resume um, by His Majesty's government, we will certainly look at that. On another note, Maisela says, as a national broadcast, they do have a mandate of educating and informing the public. Therefore, they do see themselves in the near future broadcasting different school competitions, especially when it comes to football. I think perhaps uh, we need to reach that stage whereby we engage all the stakeholders in actually trying to bring to the fore um, such uh, sporting activities from the grassroots, grassroots level so that we are able to cover all the regions of the country and of course up until that level whereby now we are saying we are at national level in terms of coverage of our sporting codes. Maisela concluded urging viewers and the public at large to continue and watch the local program produced by the Maswati. For Swatin TV Sports, Fabi Sumsonera, 
Babane. Pigs Peak Black Swallows director Charles Matebola says, as a club, they are not afraid of returning to the National First Division if the decision to be taken by the National Football Association on the current season, 2019-2020, means that they will have to be relegated. Matebola says they will accept whichever decision with both hands. He was speaking to a Swatini TV sports in Babane. The decision to be taken by the National Football Association pertaining to the current season of the 2019-2020 will give a clear picture to many clubs within the Premier League to how the future looks like. Pix Peak Black Swallows, one club that is currently not standing well on top of the M10 Premier League log as they are number 14 with only five games to go. Director of the club, Charles Matsebura, says whatever decision to be taken by the Football Association the way it will go with the decision. Matsebula says if it means for them going back to the National Fed decision, so be it. According to the Premier League by merit, it was not by chance, it was not by anybody's favour. So whatever decision the Football Association is going to take, we are okay with it. In Itokarela Pass, it's true, it's okay. If it will mean it is being, um, we are continuing to finalise in the pending games, we are ready for the pending games, we are already in Premier League, we are not afraid of anyone. Uh, true, it's the first time for us to be in Premier League. We are still learning in the Premier League with the operator journey, but we have mastered first division. So whoever may think if us be like a first division, we are afraid of first division, he must think again because we are already the masters of first division. Matsebula went on to highlight that the arrival of the coronavirus pandemic has hugely affected them as a team. Well, it's yeah. too bad, my brother. Logo, I wouldn't lie, it's too bad for us. Bed. That is why for us, we are really praying, Guti, this decision must be taken as soon as possible because it is affecting everybody. We don't know what you're supposed to do. We don't know whether you're supposed to keep the players that you have. We don't know whether you're supposed to release them. When you engage them, you don't know how long you're supposed to be engaging them. So it's a problem. It's a problem. First of all, TV Sports, Fabrice Msondra, Mbawani. We've come to the end of our news bulletin, but before we wrap up, let's take a quick recap of the headlines. Government has launched a 30 billion Emalangeni economic recovery strategy. The Prime Minister says it was not easy for the country to reach the 1990-90 target in the fight against HIV and AIDS. The House of Assembly has passed a bill that authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow money amounting to over 2 billion Emalangeni. Eswatini, that is all the news we had for you tonight. Up next is the weather forecast. Good night and God bless. At Spa, we're giving thousands of customers 50% off their shopping instantly. Simply buy any participating product and swipe your Spa Rewards card at the till to enter. And you could get half your shopping for free. Plus, get great birthday deals like sunlight hand washing powder for just $38.99 and spa cornflakes for only $18.99. Spa, here for the savings, here for you.